This program is sponsored by Capitec. Join millions of South Africans and pay the smart way with Capitec. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Insider SA, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to a winter wonderland as Instagram megastar Londi London gets away to where one million years ago we learned to master fire. Golden Arrows striker Ryan Moon and Kelly Knox say I do in a heartwarming winter wedding. Kevin Larina's epic WBC title win gives SA boxing fans heavyweight title ambitions. Mr. Supranational SA Tyler Ribeiro is burning up the runway in preparation for the global event. Mother and daughter figure skating coaches Susan Marais and Lejean Hennessy bring the fire to winter sport. And Venice's world famous Aldio Baggio restaurant is a feast for the eyes and appetite. Whatever the season in Venice, Italy, one of the hidden wonders of this city is a century-old restaurant, not so much on the famous canals, but on the lagoon. Loved by locals, Aldio Baggio is a living gallery of the finest works of Italian wine, Venetian food and art, all proudly brought to you by this man. Good morning, my name is Giulio Antonello. I'm the owner of the Aldio Baggio restaurant. Ajubaje is situated in the north side of Lagoon, and uh, you can come here uh, by boat, by private taxi, walking 15 minutes from uh, St. Mark Square. This area is special because it's not a touristic area. It's not so busy, it's uh, more quiet than uh, the rest of Venice. Uh, this place is uh, full of uh, Venetian people, it's where I was born. My family started uh, this building out of love uh, 100 years ago because uh, it was a very, very popular area. Before to get to the island, uh, to go home, stop here to, to drink a, a glass of wine, a coffee, before the, the travel to get to the islands. Giulio has doubled its popularity with his love of interiors made from upcycled materials, as well as an unrivaled collection of art and chandeliers by the local glassblowing masters of Murano. Uh, this is the front area of the restaurant. The first area that you find when you get inside, this is the bar area. My father started the business in 1921, so it's an historical place. In uh, 32 years uh, after, I changed everything in a full restaurant. As you can see, the decoration of the restaurant now come from uh, the artists from the area, from Murano, from this place. Because in our story, many, many artists come here for lunch and uh, all the people like to put some arts in this restaurant. As you can see, the, the seaweed from uh, Davide Penso, the chandelier from uh, Fabio Fornasier, the glasses uh, from Fabiano Amadi. Everything is a piece of art, everything is real. Each piece of this area comes from my heart. I love it. I love the mix of uh, material. And we use many, many different materials. The wood, stone, steel, glass. Because in the story, the Venetian uh, use uh, what they had to rebuild or to do new, new things. This table is done uh, in a lava stone. The other one is uh, done with a case of the wines. There's another one that is done with uh, different parts of uh, uh, small cases. This chandelier is a classic Carezzonico. The name of this chandelier is a uh, melt me. If you see, the arms is melting because it's too hot. And there is a 5,000 pieces, one inside the other one. You can see how big it is and uh, you can imagine how difficult it is uh, to hang it. And uh, the artist uh, put piece by piece. It takes uh, two days to mount it. In the back of the restaurant, there's another artist that put uh, his art here. He's uh, Carmelo Pluchino. He's uh, 75 years old. As you see, different techniques, uh, paint or in a three-dimensional. So this is a banana. <laughs> in this restaurant, uh, we serve only Italian wine, except for the champagne. We serve uh, more or less 350 labels that are uh, all in the wine cellar. The restaurant serves uh, an international cuisine, but uh, a bit traditional. But Daniele, the chef, put his hand on it, changing the recipe, make it uh, more gourmet. For example, the sweet and sour sardine and, uh, and the cuttlefish pate is uh, the most traditional dish in, uh, in Venice. 
This is the traditional starter for Venice. We make in the buffer and a gold leaf. And the other side is the sardine sour. It's a deep fried sardini with uh, sweet and sour onion, peanuts, and raisin. Executive chef Daniele Zenaro combines ingredients like nobody else. He shared the secret to one combo just for his South African viewers. We're making the sole and the potatoes. This is the typical and traditional Italian recipes. This is the sole and we roast it with the potatoes. We serve it with, with the mugnaia sauce. It's the real juice with the Worcester sauce, lemon juice and butter. It's a traditional dish for Italian cuisine, but we make it similar to carré, okay? Now it's the signature dishes for the restaurant. Put the sour in the heaven for eight minutes at 180 centigrade, and now it's ready to heat. Put here our sole curry and the roast potatoes. Next is the purple potato chips, purple potatoes, and the crispy type. Munyaya sauce and complete your dish. This is the series, the tiramisu, is in the Banksy tribute. And we're making the balloon and we're making the mascarpone cream with the vanilla, with the coffee and caramel chocolate. I color on the balloon with the color of Italy. It's the red, the green, but also it's the blue. And I put a little bit of the yellow for making the sun. And the second step for making your tiramisu Banksy tributes is the color the dishes with the stencil. We color with the gold and the child in dishes. This gold is uh, sugar and gold glitter. And use and uh, dishes with a little bit of the blue for making in the sky. And now complete the dessert. A tiramisu that uh, is uh, an icon dish for all Italy. I think you know Banksy, the most uh, famous artist, the street artist. Last year we had for seven months a show about the arts of Banksy, the, this uh, famous artist. You know that uh, no one, no one uh, know who is Banksy. Seven months after the start of this show, two guys come here for, for dinner. After five minutes, five, six photographers come in the door and they said, this is Banksy, this is Banksy. All the people in the room tried to take a selfie with them. And uh, the two guys are very noisy, in five minutes gone. So we decide to present a tiramisu, Banksy tribute. Thank you to the Insider SA, to visiting Venice and the Al Jubajo restaurant. I hope to meet you again and thank you very much. At Algio Baggio, they bring together every wonder that is Venice on a single plate. That's what keeps Giulio's customers coming back for more. Up next, Queen of the Gram, Londi London, rocks the cradle of humankind and shares her recipe for multimedia success. Pay the smart way with Capitec. Heifelt winters are a great excuse to explore the wonders of the cradle of humankind from a base here at the Cradle Boutique Hotel. Someone who's made the most of all the language, music and communications technology we've developed since humanity first emerged here is Instagram star Londiwe Zulu. Hey, hey, it's your favorite girl, Londi London, reality TV star, entrepreneur, and overall, just media personality. Hello. 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 How are you? Welcome. Let's go. Really Let's Ooh. go. <laughs> so the Great uh, Cradle Nature Reserve has been here for, for many years, and um, it's uh, 9,000 hectares of land. 
that we used to build a hotel on this very same property and we also house um, a whole lot of animals. So we are a non-profit organization. All the profits that happens on this property goes to our foundation, which is called the Malapa Mutsetse Foundation, which is a foundation that uh, funds a school by the name ADAT. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sky Room. As you can see, the Sky Room is situated at the top of the hill here at Credo Boutique Hotel. And uh, you're looking at uh, a nice, interior design of this beautiful room. So everything you see inside here has been designed by a guy by the name Kasper, who is a local designer for the property. Very lovely, as you can see. Londi and her friend and manager Kadi Motoze work closely together, so each knows how much the other needed this getaway. From modeling to music and television, the action never stops. Girl, we've been working together for quite a while and our friendship has been strong. One thing I love about you is that you're always a meticulous woman, honey. Yeah. From the bag to the shoe to the hair to the Everything. one, two, three, you know? Why, when, not do you feel like, okay, it's something that I have to do? I feel like when you step into a room, your appearance speaks for you before you actually say anything. It, it actually sets the tone mm. for like the type of person that you are. So mm. people respect you mm. before you even say anything. So for me, it means a lot for me to be clean, self-care, mm. to look good, and obviously to look like... Ube school, man. Yeah, I understand, man. Ube clean, ube present. School, man. Utandege, ube cute, man. Yeah. Event manager Louise Butler shared the reserve's romantic side. I'm welcoming you here to one of our very famous bush wedding and destination events. Love it. We often, mm -hmm. we often do weddings outdoors in this beautiful area, mm -hmm. um, in nature. We're also only 15 minutes drive from Lanceria Airport. Oh, nice. And the brides beautiful. can also come at yes. the helipad and get transferred down with game drive vehicles. Nice. So all your guests would come down with game drive vehicles down to a site and we set up beautifully. Another highlight for wedding parties are game drives with lead guide Howard Geach. I'm so impressed because we just started with the game drive, but we've seen so many animals so far. So yeah, I'd give this place a thumbs up. Those blue wildebeest over there, they are grazers. They tend to eat finer, shorter grass, and they are often found together with zebra who tend to eat coarser grass. And their social structure is such that you have a territorial dominant bull who acquires and defends a territory and he scent marks that whole territory. So any other wildebeest coming into that will know who the dominant bull is. So how many of them do you have here? About 300. Wow. Wildebeest spread all over the property. Oh my goodness, there's the giraffe. My oh, babe! Wow. I think it's so beautiful. Like I saw my favorite animal, a giraffe. I actually didn't know that a male has a darker complexion, should I say? Mm. Yeah, I actually didn't know that. Giraffe is reminding me very much of my Lonji Lantin braid. Imagine if the giraffe had braids. <laughs> on braid vibe. <laughs> with um, the Lonji Lantin braid, mm -hmm. the talk with Afrotech started actually three years ago when they wanted to work on a collaboration with me mm -hmm. with their braid. So I was like, I need the perfect braid that's in line with my brand. And so when they said they have something unique, I was like, okay, guys, let's get on it. So they told me it's the longest braid in Africa. And I was like, this is the perfect braid for me. And yeah, right now we're on nine colors and it's doing amazing. It's sold out more than four times. Mm, it's and been doing very well. It's been doing very well. Yeah. We're still on a roll and it's everywhere around the country. So I'm very much excited about it. Mm. And yes, it is the braid. Yes, I need to get some more. An exclusive feature of this reserve is a journey back to a time when our human ancestors first learned to tame and use fire. This is what we call infill. It's when a cave opens to the outside world, sand and stones and bones and all sorts of things get carried into the cave or washed into the cave. And it's in this breccia. Breccia is the Italian word for concrete. Mm -hmm. And that's why the bones are so well developed. There is a fossil. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. For which animal? 
That is most probably an antelope, judging from the oh. size. Here is another bone over here and here. Yeah. This cave is called Motsetse Cave. The reason it's called Motsetse Cave is it's named after that tree with the bluey green leaf. That is the Motsetse tree called Motsetse in Setswana. And this cave is, and these fossils are probably around about a million years old. Wow. So these caves have got history, deep, deep history. This has been amazing. Yeah. And the fact that you can just leave your house just 30 minutes, minutes away, away, like in 10 and lines. come here and experience something like this is mm. actually quite amazing. After a crash course in fossils, Londi brought us a fruity new twist on a seafood salad. Um, Sam the chef prepared some nice fresh salads for us with salmon trout. It is amazing, fresh. Mm. You know, very filling as well. I love the salmon. Yes. I love the raspberry that's mm. mixed in you there. Know, I the think it's fabulous. Is that gives the salad like a cute a, little a cute nice sweetness. sweetness. Yes. yes, yes. For me, obviously, everyone knew me from the social media platforms as Londi London, the Instagram model. Mm -hmm. So um, from then on, the brand actually grew because that's how my fan base actually grew. So when I started dropping the music, um, that's when I broadened my fan base. So now people knew me as Londi London, the musician, which was the main goal in the beginning. So yeah, from then on, it's been music, it's been business, it's been reality TV star. So just overall, just being an artist. Um, I feel like I'm at a very comfortable place right now um, in terms of my brand, but I'm looking forward to growing it even it further. Yeah. yeah. Um, so at the moment we're at the Sky Room and literally the view is like spectacular. Amazing. We can literally see the sun go down. We're having sundowners. The room has a jacuzzi. I can't wait to get in my bikini and just relax inside. So yeah, this is just so relaxing and breathtaking. Mm, exactly what I needed. Thanks, friend. Oh, anything for you, Thanks, my friend. Thanks, friend. Yo. <laughs> The legacy I'm trying to leave behind is to inspire a girl child that has been in my situation, that is in my situation, that you can also become. This is your time to shine. Always focus on yourself. Keep it going, girl, no matter what the situation is. Londi London follows her own advice. So come spring, expect her to emerge, having reinvented herself yet again. Just ahead, Mr. Supranational SA eyes the world title and Bafana striker Ryan Moon goes one better than scoring on debut. For 30-year-old data scientist Tylo Ribeiro, this is proving to be a winter of wonder after just being crowned Mr. Supranational South Africa 2023. Now he will contest the global title in mid-July. The moment I won, it was just so much emotions just over flooded my body. But I am honored, I am really privileged to be in this position to actually represent South Africa because it's been two years since we've sent a representative to the international stage. The most challenging part of the competition is I've done things that I've never normally done before. So I've put myself out there establishing who I am and what brand I stand for. So I'm not used to getting hair and makeup done on a normal day-to-day -day basis. So it's kind of something that I need to get used to, but I'm enjoying it. It's not bad getting pampered now and then, you know. <laughs> What Mr. Ribeiro was quite at home with was a dazzling new suit from designer Kotsatso Madumo, who is clearly in it to win it. So now we are at one of my fittings for one of the options for either my preliminary or my final of the Mr. Supranational International Competition. So the style I'm looking for, I normally do the classic black, but then a competition required that we bring a little bit something different in. And being proudly South African and looking for a local designer, no other than Khatatso, I was like, he's the guy to do this. The inspiration of the, the jacket or the suit, it was a black ocean with the reflection of the moon, which I used the stripe with a bit of silver. My signature with the suits, I 
use short lapels. We have variation, we have peak lapel, we have V-notch. But my signature is short lapel to give a boss vibe. Having also won the Mankind Fitness Award at Mr. Supranational, this is where Tylo is most in his element. So normally my workout will differ, activating different muscle groups on different days. So I would do biceps and shoulders together and then triceps and chest. Leg days get their own days. And then the other days I will do cardio and abs. So winning Mr. Supernational would mean the world to me. I would be so privileged and it would be such an honor for me, especially because last year Miss Supernational South Africa Lalela won her title. So it would just be amazing and such an honor if the Mr. Supernational South Africa can take the title this year. An avid adventurer, Mr. Ribeiro will need to embrace that spirit in the swimwear competition as he sports Quibus Fun and Bag's new range. Tylo is wearing our pop art range. We designed this in 2022. It's all around the culture of pop art, colors, designs, cartoonish, and fun. So if you can see on these shorts, they're all short shorts, a little cartoonish vibe in the front, lots of color, and if you turn around, wow, bam, pop art at its best. I think Tyler looks exceptionally well. Yeah, I'm ready to go swim. Next, it was time for the business end of Tylo's training with Mr. Supranational National Director, Wayne Stafford. So now I'm at the part of the day that I think I need the most work. <laughs> I'm here to train for the runway on the international stage and no other than my director, Wayne Stafford, is going to show me the ropes on how to work that runway. Well, speaking about that, I think it's time to work, Mr. Ribeiro. So let's hit the runway, you start practicing there. So as this is my first pageant I've ever participated in, whatever Wayne says, I do. Okay, so just a little bit of shoulders back. Okay, your feet are perfectly there, right? Just focus onto the camera. Four counts, two, three, four. I'm gonna knock it back there again. That's it, and walk it. Tyler is really a full package. He's authentic, he's got a great heart, and the camera loves him. And I think ultimately, you know, it's the power of the session. I think when it comes to Tyler, it's not just about pretty face, great body. He puts in the hard work, and his cause, which is called valuable, really and truly lies close to his heart. And I think in the end, you know, that's what's gonna shine on that international stage. Even a data scientist can be way off when reckoning the number of hours that go into perfecting a walk. So what surprised me the most about the pageant life is the amount of work you actually have to put in to actually stretch your stuff on the runway. Just knowing exactly what to do, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of mindset to actually get that to the actual part that it needs to be. So Wayne, when do I actually smile and when do I look serious when on the runway? You know what, Tyler, is very important is to feel the moment. So I think, you know, in the beginning, if you are gonna smile, then just gradually, don't go like this and then, <laughs> you know what I mean? So just work it, but ultimately you gotta, you gotta feel the crowd and you gotta yes. feel the moment, yeah. But always just focus ahead of you, eh? Tylo figured he'd draw inspiration from a brand that has catwalk ready written all over it. So for the Mr. Supranational competition, the intro number is Alvis Inspired. And I'm looking for that classic rocker type of outfit. To win this title, substance must still trump style. And our man agrees that's what really counts. The legacy I hope to leave behind is to be the voice for the voiceless, to be the beacon of hope for these people that feel they don't stand a chance, to feel that they don't feel valuable enough. I want to be that voice for them where if they look at me, they don't necessarily need to know the face, but they know that there's a voice for them in order to go into the future and actually feel valuable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Supra, here I come. It's less than a month until Mr. Ribeiro heads for Poland to contest the global Mr. Supranational title. Here's to him repeating La Lela Mswane's heroics. Or oh, there's always space for one more Elvis in Vegas. Golden Arrow striker Ryan Moon's talent saw him scouted by professional clubs while still at school. He's gone on to an international career, scored for Bafana Bafana on debut. But getting married to Kelly Nock in this winter wonderland takes the cake. 
She was walking her baby brother home from school. I was on the corner with my late friend Thailand and uh, we saw them and he said, hey, you know, there's an opportunity. Why don't you go up and introduce yourself? They knew each other. And then I ran up the road and, uh, you know, I started chatting to her, walked him all the way home, exchanged, uh, I think it's mixed pins. Mixed up PBM pins, that's how far back it went. <laughs> we exchanged pins and then we just been chatting ever since. It took a while, but eventually... It's it, safe to say that it was love at first sight. It was love. <laughs> Typical love story, guys. <laughs> As coordinator Stacy Ellis found, the couple's time in Scandinavia has given them a taste for pared-down elegance. The brief that we received from Ryan and Kelly for the reception area was modern neutrals. They wanted something clean, classic, with a touch of elegance. You'll see that we've brought that through in our table settings. We also included gold to add a touch of elegance onto the table. So you'll find that in our beautiful gold cutlery, our underplates which have gold trimming. On the guest tables, we've got beautiful tall centerpieces with the pumpous grass and the roses in the color of the day. We've also included the tool runner, and you'll see that the color scheme is carried out throughout the table, which gives a lovely, elegant feel. After Ryan proposed in a white Swedish winter, Kelly's stunning dress seems to evoke that same snowy romance. The inspiration for my bridal look, as well as the bridesmaids, I wanted something that was very classic, elegant, something very simple, but beautiful at the same time. My dress has a lot of volume at the bottom, and the girls' dresses are a lot more sleek and fitted, but they also have a little bit of draping. Our relationship with Kelly is that we're cousins and we grew up together for a large portion of our lives. She lived with us a lot throughout our childhood and she kind of became a big sister to us when we were younger. The groom. <laughs> looking forward to seeing him in his suit. And I'm really looking forward to just seeing all our family members and friends gather to support us. The groom had all three brothers there. Dalroy Moon as MC, with Bryce and Stefan as best man and groomsman. To be honest, the moment I'm looking forward to is the first dance, because after that the party is going to start and guys can have a good time and stress levels can go down. But uh, for me, besides that, I just think, you know, marrying the woman of my dreams and giving her the wedding of her dreams and just us two getting married today in front of all our family and friends, uh, that's the most important thing. It's, it's about us today, not anybody else, and uh, looking forward to marrying my uh, beautiful bride. Ensuring the guy's outfits measured up in style was designer Stelo Busiso Kuzwayo. With Mr. Moon, we went with a classic black tuxedo that could complement his wife. And for the groomsmen, we went for the beige that could complement the bridesmaids. The groom's older brother, Bryce Moon, was first to play for Bafana Bafana, and he's proudly watched his siblings rise. Ryan is a, he's a good kid, you know. He didn't really give us much trouble in the family. He's naughty here and there, but very grounded, you know, always hardworking. He knew he wanted to be a professional soccer player, and uh, he just worked really hard through the schooling time as well, and everything's paying off now. I respect him and I'm grateful that he's part of my life and I'm grateful that this day is happening. To experience such a loving, loving relationship between him and his wife-to-be is amazing. As a mother, I'm proud and the best part of today was seeing Kelly walk down the aisle. They are blessed beyond measure. I've seen the people around and also just the blessings I get in from all the elders and their grandparents that are still alive. That means the world to me. So I just wish them everything of the best. Exchanging our vows was something that I'll never forget. And just seeing everybody being so happy for us and being there for us just means the world. Seeing the, when they say I do, and we see him and he's smiling and he's overjoyed and overwhelmed with what he sees, I think that's going to bring tears to the whole room and we're all going to be a little bit shaken up after that. And then the stress will fall and we'll have a good time. Having walked his sister down the aisle, Kelly's brother Wade Nock was quietly emotional. Congratulations, Kelly. I'm proud of you and I just wish to see you guys happy for the rest of your lives. 
The day has been absolutely breathtaking. It's been an amazing day and they both looked amazing. Without God in your life, marriage is very, very difficult. A lot of people say that relationships are hard. Try moving a couch by yourself, but together it's very, very easy. And that's the way we've lived, communication, understand each other and love each other. As we know in the world today, things are very tough and there's so many demands on the young people. But if they stay focused, if they look to the Lord, as my husband said, that God will always direct them. And that is our prayer, that God will continue to bless them and keep them and continue to just let them shine as a young couple and an example to other young couples in this day and age. I feel so honored to call Ryan my husband. It's a full circle moment for us because we were high school sweethearts and now we were able to exchange vows in front of everybody. So it's been a really awesome ten moment. Years. Yes. Ten years, ten years, ten years. What I hope for the future for us is just, as the pastor said, put God first in our marriage, but sort of just have fun with each other, continue to love each other, care for each other, and lots of laughter throughout our years and just grow all together. And while they're doing that, here's to many more winters of Ryan bringing wonder and good times to football fans across the country. Next up, there's nothing like having a heavyweight title contender. And in Kevin Lorena, we have a champ in waiting. Pay the smart way with Capitech. Winter is a wonderland for 30-year-old South African boxer Kevin Lorena, who just recently won the WBC Bridgeway title and with it, the right to challenge for the world title. So if I look back on my career, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to be a professional rugby player, whether I wanted to do MMA or boxing. But I was fortunate enough to meet Peter Smith. The rest is all history. You know, Peter honed my skills and took me literally from grassroots level. And this is where we're at now. So from humble beginnings, we're still humble, but we're obviously on the upward trajectory. I think it's no secret that boxing is all about hard work and dedication. And as Peter has always told me from since I can remember, at the top, everybody works hard, everybody's dedicated. It comes down to who's the most skilled. As the champ's manager and trainer, Peter Smith's most important job is to develop that competitive edge in his fighter. Kevin, I started years back when he was still a junior, he was, I think he was 19, good rugby player, good all-round sportsman, a very keen boxer. And then him and I gelled and I was training a world champion, Chris Van Heeren. He came on board while I was training Chris. From there, we just went, I think we've been together about 11 odd years. When we get ready for fights, we actually build on a certain plan. On a normal day, we'll just go through base work and keeping the base strong helps us elevate when the fight comes. To be open and transparent, I never watch one video of my opponent because I know Peter Smith watches the videos and he formulates the game plan. Because if you watch the videos or the highlight reels of your opponent, you're only gonna see the good things. He's got the ability to dissect the bad things that we can capitalize on. In Kevin's latest victory, the strategy was to stalk his opponent over 12 rounds rather than landing his famously hard punches up front. My recent fight was arguably one of the most important fights of my career because I'd obviously just come off a big loss in December fighting for the heavyweight world title against Daniel Dubois. So this was a very hard comeback fight and probably a make or break fight for me. And we won in absolute style and now we got the shot at the world title again. The only difference this time, we make sure we execute and we become world champions again. The recent victory came down to a unanimous judge's decision. So part of training is managing the perception of how you fight. Kevin's training regime is very intense. The fundamental is your skills and your development in your game. You gotta stay on your game. A swimmer swims to win, runners run to win. Boxers need to be in the gym daily, eat, sleep and dream boxing. I think being a fighter alone comes with a lot of stress and pressure. How I draw my courage, it's being proudly South African, representing my country, representing my team, representing my wife, my beautiful children. People, promoters told my trainer, leave him, he's not gonna make it, and we proved them wrong. So I gained courage out of all of those negative things and all the positive things too, be a driving force in my career. 
After the big win in May, Kevin chose to celebrate simply by spending time with friends and family. Welcome to my home. As you can see, bless this home and all who enter. I'm a family man. Important photos on the wall, big milestones when Geraldine fell pregnant with Malachi. My beautiful children, Brooklyn and Ivana. This is where I love spending my time and I'm a proper family man. The flip side of this man who can be so punishing on opponents is how he and his wife, Geraldine Lorena, both save lives outside of the ring. So we met when Kevin was a student, paramedic student, and he came to work at my base. The rest is history. Yeah, I said, who's that? <laughs> he is the most loving and caring man in the world. Very, very supportive husband. Very ambitious, that's what I really, really love about him. Always on a mission, always doing something, never ever stand still. It's an amazing blessing. Geraldine and I have had an amazing journey. Fast forward four years later, we've got baby Malachi with us now, and he's just about eight weeks old. And you know, I've got my two beautiful children in Cape Town who live with their mom down there, Brooklyn and Ivana, and they are really are my pride and joy. I'm very blessed to be a father. I think in life, the best thing, I've been called champion, I've been called world champion, but the best thing to be called is dad. And you are the best dad. Obviously, there's so many things we like to do together as a family. Spending time like this on the couch with our two dogs here, Malachi sleeping, doing fun things, walking the dogs, spending time away from the boxing ring or time away from work, just quality time. Things that keep you grounded, reminding you of what you work for and what you do. Geraldine being a paramedic, we're always on the road together. Or we're always assisting one another. Obviously, now that she's at Malachi, she's away from that life, but that's a life that we do outside of the sport and outside of being at home. We enjoy saving lives and it's something that gives me a great thrill and a great sense of responsibility and I thoroughly enjoy it. In his paramedic work, the difference between life and death often lies in Kevin's hands, which is another reason he's so respected among fighters. Welcome to what some would call a man cave. This is an important place for me because obviously, as you can see, lots of the belts that I've won and accumulated over the years. This is the first Abio world title I won. Fast forward a couple of years later, we defended this belt seven times. This is also significant for me because this is the first belt I won as a heavyweight. This is the WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight Belt. We come this side. This is a nice frame that I did, obviously, the gloves that I fought in on this particular fight. And I framed this because this was the last time I defended the RBO world title for the seventh time. And the most important one right now, we haven't found a place for it yet, but this is the WBC silver. It's one that I've always wanted. Obviously, we're gunning for the gold now. As you can see, the WBC put me on there, the former president, Muhammad Ali, and my opponent, Rod Murray. And all the country's flags that participate within the World Boxing Council are on there. There's the South African flag. So this is important for me and a belt that I've always wanted to own, and now we got it. For millions of South African boxing fans, it's the example of literally fighting for your success, which is so inspiring. I've always strived to be a winner and to be successful, so I really work hard to win and not to let my supporters, my family and my team down. So winning is everything to me. There's no place for second. And you know, a lot of people say, well, well done for participating. No, I don't believe in that. The scoreboard's there for a reason to indicate who a winner is. And if you're not first, you really are last. So this is a, a nice recovery time for me. I enjoy it, you know, after a hard day's training. This is where I just come and cycle, enjoy my time in the state, enjoy the scenery because when I get back home, I focus hard on the ice bath and sauna to complete my recovery. After what Kevin describes as the 12-round war of his recent fight, he needs to recover. No secret that I'm a fan of ice baths. It's nice and cold today. So on this manual temperature gauge, it says 1.5 degrees. I ice bath every single morning before training, and then obviously in the afternoon after those really hard sessions. This is the last bit of recovery for the day. This is where the magic happens and where we recover. Obviously really beneficial, stimulates that blood flow, and it's just nice to relax and recover. 10 minutes in here, then I head back to the ice bath, and that's the recovery done. Having a recognized heavyweight fighter promotes our country to the world, and the Lorena name is doing just that. It's crazy to think that I could even leave behind a legacy, but I just want to leave behind something that the guy who defied the odds, 
the guy went against and proved everybody wrong that said we couldn't do it, we couldn't get this far, because there's so many people in the world who have been told that, and I just want to be the voice for them and leave that legacy behind. Sure to warm the hearts of South Africans this winter is the promise Kevin Lorena offers of us having a new heavyweight champion of the world. Coming up, bringing wonder to the ice each winter, meet the mother and daughter keeping South Africa figure skating. Still using cash? Matter for who? For what? It's time to cash less and live more with Capitec. Just choose the smart way to pay. Anytime, anywhere. No need for cash with SA's biggest digital bank. You can tap, scan or shop online because we've got you covered. We even have Apple, Google and Samsung Pay. Easy, ne? So what are you waiting for? Join millions of South Africans and pay the smart way with Capitec. It's an in-joke among figure skaters that every day is winter on the ice rink, but it does make wonders of the cold. We were in Pretoria to meet a driving force in SA figure skating, a multiple champion who is part of three generations of skaters in her family, each carrying the torch further. Hello Insider SA, I'm Lejean Hennessy and I'm a national figure skating coach. I am the six-time South African national champion. I started skating before I could walk. My mom was my coach and she used to be a skater. So I grew up next to the ice rink and I fell in love with the sport and I haven't looked back since. I was very fortunate when I was skating to represent South Africa internationally and part of that was training internationally as well. So I got a lot of amazing coaching from some of the top coaches in the world. I decided I wanted to share my knowledge and help inspire other young athletes to reach their potential and achieve their dreams and that led to me becoming a coach. Behind practically every champion there's a mother's unshakable support. Lejean's mum Susan Marais was also her coach and they now coach together. We've worked very hard in growing our team, the SA School of Skating. We're here every morning, we coach in the afternoons as well, Monday to Saturday. The numbers have been growing over the years and it's amazing to see. We offer figure skating for all ages. You know, we want to make it available and accessible to everybody. So we have from our youngsters, those are our babies, which we've got some lovely junior coaches that work with them too, all the way up for adult skaters and anyone who wants to skate for life. You know, skating is for life, so learn it at any age, at any stage. Young Alana Hennessy has grown up with an ice skating swan for a mother and grandmother. So she was bound to follow their lead. In our club, it's now the third generation. Alana, come over. <laughs> skating is in the family, it seems, and hopefully it will continue so. I've started my lessons since I was, I think, three or four. And my spinning is my favorite move. I would uh, say that she has figure skating in her genes and uh, she has a very athletic family. So I think that whatever she pursues in life, she will have fun and hopefully do well in. Alana has an immediate role model in under 10 national champion and international skater, Ava Keenan. I enjoy skating because I'm spending time with my friends and landing all my jumps. 2022's Newcomer of the Year, Onkarabile Mongatane, wears her love of the sport on her sleeve. When I was a little kid, I loved watching um, skaters at the Olympics, and there's not really a lot of South African skaters, and I really want to show my talent to the judges and people all over the world. <laughs> My teachers are more like sisters. They really help me to achieve most of my jumps. When I fall down and stuff, you always like feel sad and you're like, I'm not gonna do it. But your coaches really encourage you to keep going. Inspiration, which currently makes Tristan A. Schmulian the youngest South African landing a double axle. 
The most difficult thing is probably getting your mind in the right place when you have a competition because when your mind goes into the wrong space, you stress so much that you start doing the wrong thing. So you need to get your mind in the right place, you just need to calm down and then you can do it. That's like probably the hardest thing to do. I'm really hoping to go maybe to Worlds. So I've been practicing really hard and I think that's a good achievement. When ballets are produced on ice, the freedom of expression and momentum changes everything. It did for adult figure skater Natasha for Nikirk when she faced personal loss. When I was 21 in 2019, my mom got ill and I had to show her I'm capable of taking care of myself. And that did not go very well and a little bit down the line she sadly passed away and it was a very devastating time for myself and my family. And the moment I stepped onto the ice, I felt like I could smile again. The challenges of this sport, especially for an adult figure skater, I believe, is the time and the funding. It can be quite expensive, and to be able to live and love the sport, you need the money, so you need to know how to budget and how to save properly. What I appreciate most about banking with Capitec Bank is their digital payments. They are very easy to do, and not only that, the app is very, very user-friendly. And a bonus on the side, their low fees are incredible in these tough times. It is very easy and very simple to pay for my classes. And since I have SA School of Skating already saved as a beneficiary, I select them to do an EFT payment and the immediate transaction fee is as low as 7 Rand 50. And compared to finding your feet on ice, it's a breeze signing up for Live Better Savings. The Live Better process is as simple as opening your Capitec banking app, clicking on Live Better, following the T's and C's rules and regulations and how to's and then deciding which option works best for you, the 2, 5 or 10 Rand saving option. Live Better from Capitec Bank really offer me a helping hand in saving for stuff I enjoy so that I can live better and enjoy more. Figure skating is competitive. It's creative expression, therapy, and such a fun way of keeping fantastically fit using every muscle in your body. In short, it's a complete sport. Thank you so much for joining us today in our winter wonderland. Why don't you put on your warm winter jackets and come and join Karting North Figure Skating Association for some fun and fitness on the ice. It's probably the best way to keep warm this winter. Taking a little leap of faith and an expert class or two can open up a live better journey to last a lifetime. Or in the case of Susan, Lashan and Alana, three lifetimes. So start your journey today with a chance of winning a thousand rand cash prize courtesy of Capitech. Simply reply to the competition post on the insidersa.co.za social media platforms using hashtag live better with Capitech. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. A never feel good production.